let's be transparent with what fits for us and give five key techniques to our communication. My idea of active listening was listening to respond or react. We have to be willing to lovingly call to the table like, hey, be here with me. The way that you and I effectively manage our conflict is that we do add things like being goofy, being ourselves, being authentic. Something is occurring in the person that we care about's life and we need to ask, what is happening? Is there anything I can do to support you? When you're not 100%, we're not 100%. You and I, we have this connection where we work together and we live together and we have this romantic bond together and we're best friends. And for many people, that causes them to go, how? Because the thought of being connected to any partner that much seems almost overwhelming. And so we get asked on a regular basis, how can you spend that much time together and not want to choke each other out <laughs> <laughs> or have that deep of a bond where it doesn't become codependent because that's an easy thing to do, right? You suddenly become so codependent on your partner that it's impossible to be away from them. And that's not a healthy space to be. Or you become so irritated with your partner being together that much that it becomes an unhealthy relationship that way. So we desired to dive into our connection and answer some of those questions around how this is possible for us. Now, this is how it's possible for us, right? And it doesn't mean that it's a blanket way that it'll be perfect for everyone. But since we get asked this so many times, we thought, okay, let's just dive into it. Let's be transparent with what fits for us and give like five key techniques to our communication to really dive into healthy communication for us, what that looks like. And maybe those tips will be beneficial for other friends, romantic partners, business partners, since we do have all of those things within our dynamic. Absolutely. Yeah. And what's great about these five tips is why they've worked for us is because they're designed to help create a deeper connection. And, and that's, I think, one of the maybe the as a side note, kind of like one of the misunderstandings when, when creating tips or desiring to improve something, some part of you, right? It's always great. We want to be in, um, in movement and in flow and continue to improve. But oftentimes we forget the intention. We forget what is, what is the overall intention of this. And so the reason why these work for us is because our, both of our intention in this is to create a deeper connection. Yes. And that's for the for our life, right? That's not just, you know, that's at all levels of our relationship, as you're saying, like, yes, we're best friends. So our communication flows in a way to deepen our friendship. Uh, yes, we're romantic partners. So yes, it's it's designed to create deeper intimacy in the way that we express and communicate to each other. Uh, it's as business partners, it's also important to have a deep connection and understanding the vision in the mission of what we're doing, why we're doing it and how we're doing it. And so this is, this is really, really key. And I feel like for me, the more that I've been able to embrace these techniques, it's helped me, as you were saying, flow them into other aspects of my life with different family, friends, other relationships in terms of friendships, um, you know, it's it's really allowed me to, I feel like, to be really clear on how I express things and then have a clear communication across the board. So, yeah, that's why I want to really share that. And uh, and Sarah, again, as you said, this is, this is what works for us. If one of them is great, awesome. If all of them are great for you, awesome. Um, but this has really uh, helped us now coming up on 10 years really be expansive in our relationship um, but also still feel like we're in the honeymoon phase, which is pretty amazing after 10 years. I know. Yeah. We're still dating. Yeah. <laughs> after 10 years. Like yesterday, you surprised me 
with a date、mm-hmm. and took me to go co kart racing. <laughs> you know, these are the fun things that continue to build that connection between us.、Yeah. But it has to start with communication、mm-hmm. and deep, open, transparent communication. Even when you begin as mentors and friends, as we did, right? We didn't just start out dating. We built, it was the slow roll,、yeah. as they say, right? And that began with the willingness, and that's our tip number one to have active listening, to really hear what the other individual was saying, to understand where they were. In our respective lives, and to honor that. And in the beginning, I wouldn't claim that you were the most forthright in your communication because you didn't know exactly where you were in your journey. So it's hard to be the most forthright in your communication when you're still figuring things out. Yeah. Yeah. My idea of active listening、um, was listening to respond. Or, or react.、Yeah. And so there wasn't necessarily a,、uh, a really listen to receive, which is a huge, huge difference.、Mm-hmm. I didn't realize the extent at the time,、uh, but it, it really, when you're listening the whole time, a lot, I, I caught myself in this habit through most of my life, and it's probably with everyone up until the point I met you, that I was listening while, and then forming a thoughts and my, of what I wanted to say while they were talking. Instead of actually taking the time to pause, actively listen, like seek to understand what the other individual is saying. So they feel seen, heard, and gotten in that moment. And there's nothing stopping me. There's like no contract or clause in communication that says that it has to be a response within one second or less.、Exactly. Like, hey, you can pause and you can receive the information. And then respond back, you know, after a few seconds or whatever is comfortable for you. There's no right way to do it. And so, having that, just having that freedom to realize, like, oh, wow, like, <laughs> you know, I don't have to, you know, I can be fully present in what she's saying. And then that can allow me the space to be fully present so that I can clear, clearly communicate, <laughs> as I attempt to say that, <laughs>、uh, <laughs> what, what I feel in a response. And that type of, that, That depth of not only active listening, but then that kind of creates an active response in a way that shows that I was listening, that shows that I was present, and is, is a sign of respect and love and care. So it's a beautiful thing and a great new way that I learned. And over, it's taken me probably 10 years to get even chip away at it. <laughs> you know, so it's not just something that just turns on and you're like, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm the best active listener in the world. No.、Um, But it definitely gets better across the board. And you'll see your relationships just start to get better when you do that. It's pretty, it's really amazing. Yes. What? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> And as someone, you know, communication is one of the degrees that I hold. I studied it because I figured I could utilize it no matter what I was doing in my life. Yeah. And so, not that I am perfect. At it all of the time. I would say none of us are. We all have moments where we're caught in our own thoughts. But I understood the importance of active listening across the board. And so I practiced. And when I met you and I noticed the pattern that you had and that you were beginning to cycle in, oh, how am I going to respond? I could understand as someone who was engaged in active listening that it wasn't your intention to disrespect me or to not engage in the conversation real time. I could then, from an active listening standpoint, acknowledge that and say, I understand that you desire to participate in this conversation in this way. But what I really desire from you is to be here with me in the conversation. So, calling it forward, and we even did this as early as yesterday, 
you were having a time where so much is going on, like you were finishing up. I'm very proud of you, and I'm going to brag for a moment. You are getting your master's degree in divinity through Harvard. You are finishing up a class in that, and so you're your thoughts are going toward, okay, I have this class, and then we're relaunching some things. And so your focus is on the launch, and we finally get this day to ourselves, but it's hard to just put all of that on the shelf and stop. And so we're engaged in this conversation, and all you truly desired to do was take this moment and shut down and watch a show. (laughs) Like, I want some mental downtime. So you weren't really with me in the conversation. You were not active listening. You were five steps ahead because you desired to wrap it up. Mm -hmm. And so what I did (laughs) was understand that and say, I get what you desire, but what I really need from you is to be here in the conversation with me so that we can get to that sooner. Mm -hmm. Because we will not get to that moment if we don't participate in this conversation to complete where we are. Right. And you were like, oh, I didn't even realize I was five steps ahead because I'm so used to running at that pace right now to get everything else completed Mm -hmm. so that I can finish my class and finish our launch and finish all of this. So it was clear communication between us, you not intending to not actively listen, but me recognizing that you weren't present with me and actively listening and just gently calling it out, not going, yo, stupid, (laughs) why aren't you listening? You know? Because I absolutely talk like that. (laughs) (laughs) And so do I. No, it's, you know, pattern interrupts. (laughs) We got to do pattern interrupts sometimes. Uh, So we have to be willing to lovingly call to the table like, hey, be here with me. I need you here with me. Because most individuals who are not actively listening across the board, whether it's business, relationships, friendships, they're not intending to not be there with you. They just have more things going on in their life. And so if you need them there with you, ask them to be there with you. Yeah. Don't get mad at them because they're not. That's such a good point. And I mean, and that's, that's number two, right, is uh, expressing your needs clearly, right? Yes. And so active communication is, or <laughs> active well, it listening, is active it is kind of communication as a whole, but active listening and expressing your needs clearly really go hand in hand, which is why we're kind of talking to them uh, back to back in this way. Um, you clearly expressing what you needed in that moment helped me re- realize where I was. Mm-hmm. And then it allowed me to say, oh, you know, I am not actively listening. And so even though I kind of shared where I was, like, hey, I just wanted to relax, but I wasn't really doing a good job of clearly communicating it because I wasn't sure. Like, I honestly wasn't necessarily fully actively listening to myself. I wasn't actively listening to the thoughts in my head, to where I wanted to be, to what I need, what I personally needed at that moment. And so not only was I not clearly communicating what I needed to myself, I definitely wasn't doing that to you. And so that little call to action, if you will, that little pattern interrupt, as you're saying, um, which you did not call me stupid or anything, <laughs> yeah, <never. laughs> um, um, <clears throat> really made a difference because it just kind of, it was kind of like, um, like in golf, for example, I've shared this before. I take a rubber band, you know, I, I have it and I, and I just kind of snap it and, and it kind of pulls me back. It's a pattern interrupt. You get to snap back. Right. And so that's something that through this process, you and I have, have helped each other out by not being rude or mean or disrespectful, but just lovingly providing a, hey, snap back. And, oh, yes, okay, you're right. Um, Let me take a second and let me listen to what you're asking because you're clearly sharing what you desire out of this moment. Let me take a moment so that I can do the same in return. And then we immediately got on the same page. And honestly, being goofy like we just were is a huge part of that. Now, Honestly, I know that's not everyone's personality, Mm -hmm. but find that part of your personality that is uniquely you and utilize that to bring levity or something to that moment as you're communicating your needs. Do it in your own way so that 
your personality is being infused. Mm -hmm. And it comes from that place of honest sincerity. Yeah. Right? You know, for us, it's just being goofy, goofy, and we're like into superheroes, and we're into all of this fun stuff. So we talk about things being game levels or superhero type things or... But whatever it is for you, make it resonate so that as you're communicating it out, you can bridge that connection and people can understand you and your needs and how to connect with that, right? Absolutely. Especially in relationships. Yeah. And I feel like that's a really good segue into the next one in terms of how to manage conflict, right? And we have a really good clip on this that we talked about a couple weeks ago in one of our podcasts. We'll definitely put it in the description below. So if you want a quick quick link into a, a clip with us talking about how we effectively navigated a, a recent conflict, uh, it's a really good one. Um, we've gotten really great responses and we really appreciate everyone reaching out and sharing how it's really helped you. Um, and so, yeah, we'll put that in there. But high level, having I mean, the, the way that you and I effectively manage our conflict is that we do add things like being goofy, being ourselves, being authentic. Because when there are frustrations or there is conflict, that's not because we don't like the other person or, or you know, it's not about the other person. Usually it's about the situation, right? Yes. And by bringing that sense of authenticity into the conversation, it reminds us, like, it just re it reminds us of the love that we have for each other. And that is far greater than, than any moment of frustration. I mean, it towers any moment of frustration or, or struggle or you know, perceived suffering in that moment. None of that can compare to the amount of love that we share between each other. And so that always trumps the conflict. Yes. And it immediately, uh, in many ways, uh, I don't know what the word is right now, but uh, communication is not your friend at this. Yeah, moment. it is not my friend at this. Um, <laughs> I know, okay. I know what I the, the desire I want to say, but um, and this is what happens yeah, in communication yeah. sometimes, you words. right? Yeah. There you go. Like you have your intention, but yeah. conveying that intention is not always the easiest thing. It is not. No, but neutralizes you, it. There Boom, you go. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so thank you, my love. Um, so yeah, it absolutely just, it neutralizes that conflict, right? Because it just reminds us of the love that we have, the passion and connection that we have. And so, and then we can be a little bit goofy and, you know, that's our thing, right? Or we'll kind of, you know, throw a Star Wars joke in there or, or something from, you know, Dumb and Dumber or Zoolander, just to like bring, as you said, bring levity, bring, you know, just kind of something in it to just kind of reset right? And, and not that it's not serious or we're not serious about it. Thank you. Yeah. And I think that that's important too. But if we're so serious that we can't understand that it's a moment in our relationship mm -hmm. and not the culmination, like that's not the most important part of our relationship, right? It's one moment. And five years from now, we won't even remember that moment. Mm -hmm. no, you're so right. Yeah, oftentimes we get mad at people or hold grudges and we're like, we don't even know like a week or two or even a couple months later, like, I don't even know what it was. Yeah. And so it's, why, then why, right? That, and that's, that's something we've seen in shows and, and even around us, yeah, just in really individualists. Right. And that's just a good, good reminder to us to just, hey, our, our love yeah. in our relationship is more important than any one moment because, you know, the, that, that love is lasting it is the depth of it is what shapes our entire life together and that that's worth saving you know and and i don't want to say fighting for because you know that's what we've seen you know in shows like you know yeah. we've been seeing them and like oh, i'll fight for you and, and all that and that's cool that's not like nice passion and and and, and love but it's like I, it's not about the fighting for each other it's about respecting and honoring each other and loving each other. And choosing and each choosing. other. And choosing. God, that's a great word. Even yes. I don't desire to let go of expansive love because of a choice. Mm. One choice that someone I love has made or someone I work with and respect has made. Because no person I love is a single choice. Now, if they continue to make the same choice over and over and over and over again, 
and it's hurting or harming our connection, I may choose to step away from that connection for a bit Sure. until they make a different choice for themselves and for us. But that doesn't mean that I love them less. It simply means that that choice is not honoring boundaries, right? Absolutely. And so that's something we can talk about here in a bit. But I don't desire for the whole relationship to just go away because the love's not going to go away. And if I don't communicate, then I'm not doing my part either. And I feel like that's where you're getting to. It's like we need to be able to communicate that. Mm. Absolutely. Hi, I'm Amber. Thank you so much for watching. If you could do me just a quick favor and click like and subscribe wherever you are, it helps us more than we can possibly say. And so that's kind of where number four, I feel, really flows in well. And that's just regular check-ins. Yes. And that's something we do all the time. Mm -hmm. It's multiple times a day. Uh, so, I mean, I guess not always, but but usually at least once a day, we'll say, mm -hmm. where we just check in and just seek to understand where we're at. Um, and even if there is an off moment, and this is one of my favorite things about how we, this kind of flows hand in hand with with managing conflict, right? If there's an off moment, we can feel that we're kind of misaligned, right? Yes. In our communication. And we'll be like, hey, is something going on? You know, what's, you know, what's, what's, what's happening? You know, it, it comes from this okay? place. Yeah. yeah. It's from a genuine place of seeking to understand uh, versus shaming or guilting or any of these kind of low vibrational icky feelings of like placing it on someone else that they're not up to their game. It's, it's, it's seeing them from a space of compassion, empathy, sympathy, saying, Hey, you know, I'm noticing you're not at a hundred percent, you know, that's okay. But walk me through it. What's going on? You know, how can how can I help you? How can I be there and support you? Because when you're not a hundred percent, we're not a hundred percent. And so as a dedicated partner in the fact that we continue to choose and love each other at the greatest capacity that we know how in every in every now moment, you know, how can how can I support you in this moment? Because it's needed. And that's just such a space to be of of loving feeling because it's like, wow. I don't need to be perfect all the time. I don't need to be on my game all the time. I am seen and loved exactly for where I am, even in my off moments. And then I know that she's there to support me and I'm there to support her in those off moments. And that allows this pressure, which seems to, to me, build up and creates these, um, you know, large arguments and these blowout moments is because this pressure is building up and it just goes, and, and, you know, it just pops, right? Yes. But when we can diffuse those moments by checking in and, and seeking to understand from that pure love and connection, then it allows us to just pull back, feel relaxed, let go of that anxiousness and just be like, hey, yeah, I'm, I'm not 100% today. I've even said that. I was like, I, I, I may take the first couple hours of the day or half the day, and I'm probably not going to talk much right now because I, I don't know what is – it's not it's not clicking. My words – aren't coming out in the way that I mean them. So I'm just going to take some time just to kind of sit and just, just not talk a bunch right now. Cool. And we, yeah, I mean, we've both been there, right? Yes. And, and, and that it's great. That's just a quick check-in just to allow us to know where we're at instead of, you know, if you're not talking to me and then you don't share that, or if I'm not talking to you and I don't share that, it could be like, well, are they, uh, you know, is this person, you know, they mad, are they mad yeah. at me? Did I do something wrong? And we get all this, you know, your inner critic comes in to play. Oh, yeah. And it's like, you know, so. And then what did something, I do? What did I do? Uh, yeah. yeah. And then something comes out and not, it was, it was nothing. You know, it, was, it had nothing to do with the other person. And so I think that's where this like quick check-in, it's, it, it's, that's the importance. It seems so small, but it's actually huge because of what it can snowball into if we don't have intention and purpose behind it to allow it to actually help us in, a, in a, an amazingly impactful way every day. Yes. And I think that's true with our friends mm -hmm. and with our coworkers, mm -hmm. because that inner critic really can start to weigh in, right? And we begin to say, oh, they're mad at me, or I did this wrong at work, or it just adds up with family too. And if we could clearly communicate in these relationships and just check in 
And instead of making it about us and thinking, oh, my inner critic is telling me it's about me, understand that it's likely not about you at all. It is something is occurring in the person that we care about's life. And we need to ask, what is happening? Is there anything I can do to support you? Now, they'll probably tell you if it's about you. And then you have clarity and you can take action and actively listen and invoke all of the other tools. But until you know that, all you're doing is taking shots at the wind and hoping that you're correct. But that's not going to be beneficial for anyone. So if you do a check-in and you begin to understand, chances are high it won't be about you. There's something else going on. And maybe they don't even want to talk about it at that moment, but at least they feel your love and support. Right? Well said. Absolutely. And oftentimes when we are in those moments, we need those, we need affirmations. Mm -hmm. And that's where kind of the fifth and final key point here is, is really affirmations are a great way to create a a deep connection. I mean, we all, whether we like it or not, we all thrive on, on positive reinforcement, right? Positive affirmation. Um, and many will say, well, I like, you know, a negative and all that. There's, there's arguments and thoughts for all of it across the board. We're not here to say that this is the only way. But it, you can't deny that it feels good when someone affirms you. I mean, it does. It, it's a beautiful thing. And especially in a relationship, when you can do it in a way that isn't self-serving, in the sense, it's like, well, I'm constantly affirming you because it makes me feel good about our relationship. It's like, no, I, I just, I really deeply desire the other person to feel seen, heard, and gotten, like what we were talking about in the beginning. Mm-hmm. And so one of the things I really love about the way that you share positive affirmations to me is when we actually are in conflict. It reminds me of how much your love is still present, even in those brief moments of frustration. Um, And it's things like, even if you are feeling frustrated, you still take the time to pause and just say, I hear you, or, you know, I understand, or I respect your feeling on this, even when we differ. And it's like, those, those are, you don't, it's, it's not like, Hey, you're, you're the best. You're amazing. You know, those are positive, but so is like affirmations of just like saying, I see you. I don't think, you know, I don't think I've really would have originally put those in the same category as positive, but now experiencing it for as long as I have very, very much, is it in the same category of positive? Because in, in those moments, yeah, you, when you're in conflict, it's hard not to feel isolated. It's hard not to feel uh, removed or reserved or pulled back or not connected. And so those, those, those moments that we can, even when it feels like there's disconnect, that we can hold steady to the core of our relationship and love and show that positive affirmation through letting them know that they're being seen or heard or gotten in that moment, even if there is a fundamental difference in opinion, mm-hmm. it can still be respected. And that is that love shining through. Yeah. We're not going to agree on everything and it would be boring if we did. Mm-hmm. Right. We need to learn from each other. I agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> we agree. <laughs> But the beauty is when we can agree to not agree. Mm -hmm. And I think this is true across the board. I think if we as a human collective could get to a point where we started saying, I don't agree with that perspective, but that's okay because I can learn from that perspective. Mm -hmm. And so I understand your position. I simply don't align with it given where I'm at right now. Okay, we're good, but at least I can understand that that's where you are, even if I can't align with it. Good. We at least hear each other, and we're in support that we can both have a perspective, even if it doesn't mirror one another. Mm -hmm. And I can love you for where you are, and you can love me for where I am, And we can continue on together 
and be fine with that. Absolutely. It kind of seems like the misunderstanding is much like the unity versus uniformity aspect, mm-hmm. right? And, and we've talked about this in other podcasts. And so when we, when we love each other, as you're saying, we definitely, we don't need to agree with everything. And I think that's that, you know, uniformity is like this idea that we're all the same, but unity is recognizing that we are, our differences is, is what we all share together. Yeah. And we can learn from that and grow from that. And because of those differences, we're stronger. And so in a relationship, like the love that we share is not a uniform love. It's not like, it's not uniformity. It's, it's unity. Yes. It's, it's that because we are different people, we have a lot of overlaps. We both love Star Wars. It's fantastic. It is, it is <laughs> and, so awesome. And when she quotes Star Wars uh, out of nowhere, <laughs> it just makes my heart just sing. And it is amazing. And I'm like wondering, how am I so lucky? <laughs> but it's in the moments that, you know, when she shares her different opinion, like when you share your different opinion and you help me grow by getting me out of my own way, it's like, ah, oh, I mean it's even more amazing and just I love that so much and so that's it's it's that that beauty because I know when you provide something to me it's to pull the best out of me and when I provide something to you it's to pull the best out of you so our unity is in our collective growth that's special that's amazing that's what it makes that's what it means to have a deep deep connection with someone and when you can have that in your romantic partnership and then apply that to that type of concept of like, hey, no matter what relationship with my parents, with my siblings, with my best friends, with my coworkers, with strangers, if my goal is through that connection point of communication, being really, really clear, is to lift that other person up, well, then how can humanity as a species lose? Exactly. I love that. And when we observe individuals who are in any kind of a connected partnership, whether that is a relationship, family, you know, coworker, however it is, and their communication is out of frustration and they're going at each other instead of talking with each other, it is in many ways sad because creating a bridge when you're going at each other becomes much more difficult and you're tearing things down you're tearing your relationship down when you're coming at each other Mm -hmm. but if you take that step back and you really begin to use these tips and seek to understand each other and communicate with each other instead of at each other, then these bridges really begin to become stronger and stronger. And it doesn't just help your relationship, it helps you as the individual because you begin to understand how to communicate with yourself more deeply Mm -hmm. as well. I know, and I talk about this often, when I started doing my inner work and I heard from all these different avenues go deeper within go deeper within communicate with yourself deeper within and I'm like what does that even mean you know it is through these parameters and understanding communication from the external that you begin to really connect with that communication with the internal and so if you are not a quick to go within individual practicing this external begins to help you create that bridge to the internal and understand how to do the same within. Love it. So well said. Breathing love and communication is, is, can be from a place of collaboration. And when you can learn how to collaborate with yourself in terms of the way that you, because oftentimes we are kind of like our own worst enemy. Yes. Um, as I feel like what I'm, I'm gathering from what you're saying um, it's such a key point. And so when we have har- disharmony within ourselves, it's no wonder that we communicate in the same way to others, right? Exactly. So we can really, really learn to collaborate with ourselves and be really clear and intentional and create that deep connection within ourselves. It just, it makes it a lot easier to have deeper connections uh, with others. Yes. But we're all different. 
And so if we're not well-versed at doing that within first, then practice outside of self, right? Find someone you trust and practice outside of self first. Because I have been to a lot of these seminars, workshops, all of these things now where everyone is saying it has to begin within. And I don't disagree with that, 100%. But we're not all great at starting within first. We need to be able to see it outside of self first. The tangible realization of, oh, this is possible out here, and I can see that happening. So then I can apply it inside. So I can't tell someone that there's only one path if I'm touting there are multiple paths up the mountain, right, for all things in life. There are multiple paths up the mountain for all things in life. So if you are not someone who can quickly and easily apply these things to your inner realm, then by all means, take this and practice it in your external world with someone that you trust and a partner and see that development outside first. Get that awareness, then flip that script and go inside and see how that begins to happen in your inner world. And the more that it happens in your inner world, the more it will start happening outside of you as well. Then all of a sudden you're like, oh, yeah, now I see. And things start to click. And that's really my my flow through this is honor where you are and who you are and how you come at life. And don't let anyone make you a mold of who they are and how they see life. Not even us. Like all we can do is share what fits for us and take from that what fits for you. Go around going, oh yeah, this little nugget is great and it will fit for me. And superheroes are awesome for us. That's why in Silence Your Inner Critic, we wrote the whole thing or I wrote the whole thing around becoming the superhero, not just the hero, but the superhero of your whole life, right? And to me, that's how I see my life. I don't just want to be the hero. I want to be the freaking superhero. And that allows me to then apply that to all of the superpowers and tools that I pick up and how I see it going into my arsenal and who my man in the chair is or my woman or my person in the chair and how I go at things because my life is this epic journey that I'm navigating through. That works for me. And if that works for other people, that's awesome. Let's go on this epic quest and adventure together and let's create a league of our own where we're out and we're creating this amazing world of pure love where we have these quests that are so fun together. But that's not going to work for everyone. So let's figure out what would work for other individuals. And to me, that's clear communication. That works for me. That doesn't work for me. Here's what would work for me. Here's a group that we could set up, especially under Sui Vera. Let's have fun with that. Right? So well said, Mello. Speaking of silence, you're in a critic. Um, I don't know. Do you want to share uh, some, a brief update on where we're at? I do, because, because thanks yeah. to our community and viewers of the Heart Leader podcast, we have a ton of interest in publishing the book. We went from thinking we were going to self-publish to publishers coming to us and being interested multiple publisher requests, and we believe we have narrowed it down to one. So I'm just going to stay there Mm -hmm. because until we actually sign with a publisher, I don't know that we can say much um, in honor of the other publishers who have stepped forward, but we are within, within days of signing the contract for the publisher that Silent Your Inner Critic will be released through. So for all who have entered our wait list, exciting news. And if you haven't entered the wait list yet and you are excited about joining our wait list, you can go to silentyourinnercritic.com, learn all about the book, get on the wait list, 
and receive a discount when we do launch. So very excited and so grateful. So, so grateful. It's amazing. I'm so proud of you, my love. I'm excited. This book is fantastic. And I'm not just saying that because I love you. I do. But also, it's, it's, <laughs> but also. Uh, but also <laughs> it is just really awesome. So, um, so I'm, uh, it's, it's, yeah, I'm super excited for you, sweetheart. So thank you. Um, and this is just the start. Uh, there's going to be a whole lot of fun stuff uh, coming through this book and, and beyond it. So, uh, so stay tuned. Thank you so much for listening today. Uh, if you get a chance, check out the links below uh, to explore the other clip that we talked about. Um, how we uniquely flowed through a, uh, a recent conflict. Uh, you might enjoy it. It's a little bit different. So, um, and then, yeah, as Amber said, uh, click the link, join, join the wait list on Silence Your Inner Critic, and, uh, and then feel free to share. Comment below. Uh, these are just five uh, effective communication tools to kind of really help you create that deep connection. And so if you have a few that have really worked for you in a relationship, again, we're all about community. So share in the comments below. We can't wait to hear them. We'll add them. We'll make this like a living kind of document, if you will, and uh, and let this be a really great hub right here uh, on, you know, on this podcast to just allow people to really enhance their relationships at all levels of those relationships. Uh, we'll see you next time.